to, you know, how is this gonna, how is this gonna pan out? So we developed this locker, and all of a sudden, with the security people started to sign up and start to use the service. The, uh, the next big obstacle that we faced was the quality. I spoke a little bit about software, but this is really where the need for software came in: was that we had no way of actually handling the operation. Uh, between my business partner and I, we had hired uh, some drivers now to do the deliveries, and we were trying to focus on the preferences and, and outsourcing dry cleaning and doing wash and fold. And all of it sounds very dry, and when you're doing it, you kind of forget that it's about laundry and dry cleaning. You just see this, you know, um, monetizing the service that people enjoy. We really think that we sell free time, but the problem is that people stop wanting to buy free time from us because um, we would mess up their orders. So we had to figure out how to build systems better so that you know, the checks and balances were there uh, without more, more labor being hired. And that's where the programmers came and they kept ticking away and then that really, uh, that ended up with us running out of money because um, we, in an effort to not hire people to deliver clothes, in an effort to not hire people to um, wash clothes, um, you know, in, in excess of what we needed to, we, we hired a programmer and then a second programmer, which cost a lot more but in a fixed sense. And there's a little bit of a mix of immaturity and, and poor budgeting. Uh, some of the mistakes that, that are easy to make when you're starting your company because you can't, you can't wear every hat, but in the beginning you have to try to because money's scarce. And so we came to a cash crisis where we realized in about six months we're gonna be, we're gonna be out of money. And so that's, a, uh, that's definitely a scary thing. That's one of those valleys where you think, oh my God, everything's gonna end. Uh, all my employees, all their families, they're not gonna have any money. What am I going to do? You know, I, I basically at this point I'm a student, but I've taken a leave of absence. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it back to pay for school. And so um, the obstacle, the uh, way to get out of that one was that we were able to put together about five hundred thousand dollars of friends and family money, which everybody talks about venture capitalism and uh, and angel money, and that's that's good in its own right. But if you can get friendly money from friends and family, that's definitely the way to go. Uh, it's it's a little bit tricky because if you lose it, you also have a relationship on the line. So it kind of makes you work a little bit harder to not lose it. I've met with a lot of guys who are successful entrepreneurs, but maybe in their first venture, when they had VC money, they kind of spent too much. They said, well, I have $5 million, and the VCs show $5 million in my throat because what happens is the VCs get so much money. Uh, it's not so much about, uh, you know, it's not always about the quality of investment with them, it's what they can get out of it, and in order to get the return that they promised their limited partners, they have to put a minimum of like three or five million in. And so if you take a term sheet for five million dollars, it seems great, but then all of a sudden you can't uh, be capital efficient. And if you're not capital efficient, you can't always get the same IRR that they need or return that they need. So we opted thus far to go to grow organically. And the one reason we did that is because laundry and dry cleaning is something that's been around for a while. And it's not it's not the sexiest thing in the world. And the technology behind it isn't really that uh, you know, crazy right now, except for like what we've built, we think. And we didn't think that anybody's gonna leapfrog us. Now, depending on the type of business you're in, uh, you might need to take a lot of money all at once because if you don't develop it fast enough to get to market, somebody's gonna come along right behind you and do it. And we don't see that happening with with this industry. And at least even if somebody does come along and start to compete in the same, I guess, technological laundry play that we do, it's there's room for more than one player. So um, after, we, after we got the money, it was really because <clears throat> our investors believed in us that we could scale this thing. And that's the constant battle, even that's the constant battle of every business, is how do you, how do you continual, continually shed away the excess and, and scale it? Because at every stage of a business, there is some, some lack of efficient spending, and there is some additional overhead that, that grows, that you, you think is overhead, you think it's fixed, but it really becomes variable to what you're trying to do, and so it takes stepping back and figuring out how can I duplicate this in another marketplace uh, in the, the most cost-effective way and how can I continue to do that without alienating uh, my people uh, and my investors because you don't want to you don't want to stop showing a return and you definitely don't want to uh, be cheap with your people because uh, if you have a company that has a lot of demotivated employees uh, you're not going to have a strong workforce and you're only as strong as you know, your weakest employee so, uh, you know, in a nutshell, this is our, these are our 2008 goals. We completed them. Uh, I'll skip over that. The future, uh, what we really want to do, when you see break even, what that means is the, the laundry and dry cleaning division, or garment ballet, is very profitable on its own. <clears throat> we 
have another company, as I mentioned, Husky Express, that brings in no revenue whatsoever because it's just a cost center, all development. So we need about another thousand customers uh, so that the profits from the laundry and dry cleaning can cover all of the development staff and moving forward. And so we're really using laundry and dry cleaning to build up an infrastructure that we can then franchise out into different cities. And that's probably, you know, I, I say May, more around like August. Uh, one of the things is that it's always easy to get uh, optimistic, especially with sales. Oh, I only need to close a thousand customers. I only need to get four channels. And it always seems to be a little bit more. But you kind of learn uh, the fundamentals of, of where you make estimates from. And one big thing that we're looking forward to is making an eco-friendly facility. We just switched to green cleaning, which we're excited to do. And yeah, the, pushing the sustainability is good, obviously, for marketing reasons. But it also makes you feel good, and it makes your employees feel good that they're not you know, contributing to the waste of the world. I mean, we're still driving trucks around, but you know, we're working on ways to create electrical vehicles, not create electrical vehicles, but use electrical vehicles, and uh, you know, move in that way. And we're working with the city to acquire land in an economic empowerment zone, so there'll be lots of motivated labor. And then from there, <clears throat> we'll start to really tool the model for the, the franchising out. <clears throat> These are some of the cities that we want to get into. Uh, like I said, we really only want to operate in cities. And then, say for example, University of Michigan is not, not up there. We would franchise that out because there might be some laundry and dry cleaning service that would actually want to, to be serviced there. Uh, some of the assumptions break even, not really important. Some of our people. And uh, the, more, the more you really look at it, your company is really all about people. And that's, uh, <clears throat> that's what keeps, keeps you going sometimes. And what, it's, it's disappointing. Uh, especially running a small company, that money is one of the only success metrics that people gauge you by, because you won't always, you won't immediately be driving a fancy car. I know my business partner thought, oh, by the time I'm 21, he started when he was 19. He's like, oh, I'll be a millionaire by the time I'm 21. I came in about the time when I was 19. I was like, this is great. By the time I'm 21, I'll be a millionaire. Uh, not millionaires, not yet. And the thing is that you throw all the money back into the business, and. A lot of outsiders think, oh, are you making money? Oh, you're running your company. All my friends from home said, oh, you're running your company. Oh, that's great. You're probably making a lot of money. <clears throat> and you don't necessarily want to say, oh, oh no, I'm, I'm not making a lot of money. But it's, you realize when you're running your company, it's not all about the short-term money. And I think that's where a lot of people...